how magical it ends for Gay Cal. Just made him look absolutely silly. Cade Cowell joining us now. Cade, thanks for the time. I know you're, you're a very busy man, especially uh, this week in particular. So let's get right to it. And let's start actually at the beginnings of your soccer journey, man. Tell me, what are your kind of first memories of contact with soccer? I remember just going in the front yard, uh, getting trained by my grandpa and my dad. I mean, that's where it all started, right in the front yard. And then I played on some rec teams and then went to Minnesota Ajax and moved to um, Ballistic and then down to Quakes Academy and Science. That's kind of how it went. Uh, I'm curious about the jump from, I don't want to say regular, but kind of the, the conventional travel ball to the academy, right? Because that's, I think, kind of the first decision that, that you make in your career. Tell me about that time, what kind of you were feeling, and what drew you to, to the academy system? Yeah, I mean, that was definitely a big jump. I mean, when you're kind of in travel ball, I mean, you go to LA a couple times, but then you don't travel every single week to a game if it's an away game. So that was kind of wild and a big jump and um, it's kind of hard at first. It's a big adjustment. How were you feeling when you made that adjustment? I felt pretty good. I mean, it was, like I said, it was a big step. So I felt pretty confident that I made an academy team and I obviously wasn't playing or starting right away, but it was just cool to train with guys that were um, bigger and better than me at the time. So that was really good. So you get into the academy, right? And, and then it's kind of like a ladder. Okay, I'm U15s, U16s, U17s. Describe that process because it sounds like early on, um, it wasn't all easy for you. It wasn't right starting minutes right away. Yeah, so when I first joined, uh, I think it was at the U15 level. I think I was like maybe two years younger um, than the normal age. And I think uh, what it was called is like a DP or something like that, where like you, you're on the roster, but you don't kind of travel and you kind of, play a couple games here and there, and you just train every day with the team. And then the next year, I started um, at like right back or something like that. And then the following year, still at U15 age group, I, that was my first year kind of playing like the nine. And then uh, that was when I had like 30 something goals. So that was like kind of the start of that. You just glanced past something pretty quick there. You went from a right back to a nine that's scoring 30 goals a season. What, what happened? What happened there? That was very quick. I don't know. I was just a lot faster than a lot of the guys. So I was just, they would just play me behind. I would run on and just shoot. It seemed kind of easy, but that's kind of how it went. <laughs> I bet you didn't mind that transition, right? From right back to nine? I did not. Um, so, so what happens in the Quakes Academy? Because because you move up through it pretty quickly, and then next thing you know, you know you're on, you're on the senior team. How did they help you make that transition? Um, that was kind of like we knew going to Quakes that like I was going to be a homegrown. So that was like always like in the back of my head like I moved into a host family so I always from the start had like the professional treatment I was in the locker room like once or twice a week before I signed so that was always helping and then training at the academy at night so that's that was like a big step and that's what helped me one I would think just as an academy player like there's nothing better than playing against the real thing right so tell me about those those first training sessions uh, when, when you're maybe not even signed to that first team yet, but really getting those first touches against senior professional men, that's that's got to be awesome. Yeah, I mean, I always remember my first day. It was like my first day ever of being an earthquake. They threw me in like some like 10v10, 9v9 small side game with the first team. And I was on the same team as Wando. And I remember like making like three or four mistakes back to back. And he just like ripped into me. And I was like, oh, God, like this, this is going to be a big jump. But then I had some good plays after that. And then he talked to me. It was like really nice, super helpful from the first day. So that that definitely was a big start. I'm thinking about, you know, guys to look up to. There's probably not a, a better guy, right, than Chris Wondolowski, especially for a homegrown. I mean, he's effectively, a, you know, a homegrown there. Uh, how, how important was he to kind of have as, as an early career mentor? He was very important. I mean, like I said, from the very first day to the last day, I mean, he's still now helping me on the coaching staff. So. I mean, he's always telling me um, great advice, always stay moving, always, his work ethic was awesome. How he was a leader on and off the field, I mean, he's helped a lot. So your academy successes at San Jose, they opened the door to the first team. They've also opened the door to international uh, soccer as well. You're with the U20s right now. What's it like for you when you put on that, on that shirt and get to play at the international level? I mean, it's awesome. I mean, sometimes there's no better feeling than that. Is there a difference, like, U20, youth international level to like that, the highest levels of, of, you know, the youth level that you're playing here and kind of what's that step up? 
you got the best kids in the nation playing against each other, you know. So everyone is it's going to be a lot cleaner, a lot faster on the ball. Kids are bigger, kids are stronger. Just the best of the best going out there and battling against each other. So it's a really good level. So you got a couple choices, right? You, you could play for the U.S., you could play for Mexico as well. Uh, how, how often do you think about that at, at this point in your career? I don't think about it at all. I just, just play, you know. Whoever calls me up, whoever I feel is best. I mean, my little brother's playing with Mexico and I play for U.S. So I think that's cool. I think that's different, you know. So I don't, I don't think about it at all. Could you imagine if you guys pick one side and the other at the senior level, how awesome that would be for the rivalry? That'd be crazy, huh? That'd be awesome. <laughs> That'd be awesome. You guys ever talk about um, your international futures and, and kind of what you might do? Um, a little bit, yeah. I mean, my brother's starting to get older now, so we're kind of starting to talk about it a little more. And I think he wants to, as much as I want to play with him, I think he wants to play against me and slide tackle me or something. So <laughs> that's how he is. It's good. Hey, I'm sure I'm sure the academy is a huge part of your development story, but your brother has to be as well, right? Just having somebody to, to go against like that. Um, yeah. How much? How similar are your games, and, and how much have you influenced each other? I mean, we're identical. I mean, if you look at me at that age and then see him, it's literally the same player. Big, fast, strong, can score goals. He's doing really well. Nice. Does he have your hair? He's starting to. <laughs> it's very close. <laughs> Any future plans for it? Or are you going to rock this dude for a while? I don't know. I kind of live day by day with the hair. <laughs> One day I'll wake up and like, I want to change it. I want to dye it this color and then I just do it. What about the number, man? 44 is like a weird soccer number. There's got to be a story there. Yeah, so I mean, growing up, baseball and soccer, um, I always wore four because it was my dad's favorite number. It's just like a family number. So when I signed, the equipment manager said, I obviously can't take four, but he's like, I'll give you 44. So I was like, yeah, cool. And then I rocked in. I actually really like it. I wore it in an all-star game and I've had it for four years now. So, I mean, I love it. I mean, I got it tattooed on me, so yeah. Cool. So no matter and no matter where you go, you're probably not gonna have much trouble getting that that uniform number, right? You're never gonna exactly. have to buy it off somebody. Exactly, it's kind of my own thing too. One of the cool things about your resume, man, you got something that that I don't think a lot of people have, and a lot of people wish they have. You scored in your pro debut, right? So uh, what was that like? And gives it right away, and it's Cal with a chance, and Cal makes no mistake about it in his first pro start. The 15-year-old kid, Cal, takes advantage. And welcome to the show, kid. It's 2-0. That was, like, just mind-blowing. I mean, I got subbed on, and then I scored, like, two minutes. It was, like, my first touch of the game, and I was just, like, almost just, like, blacked out. Like, I didn't even remember. I was so excited, and all my teammates were super excited for me. That was a really cool moment. What was the reaction from, from family and friends? Because I'm sure you had a lot of them in the stands for that yeah. one. Yeah, I did. I mean... Pretty sure they're, my mom and everyone, grandma, aunt, they were all crying and my dad was super pumped and got to go home with them after, so it was really cool. What's the, the feeling in that moment? You know, you said you're coming off the bench um, when you're, you're just about to literally step over the line to make your pro debut. You're almost physically at the threshold of a dream. What, what are you feeling in your mind? What's going through your guts? I mean, I think in that situation, what I was thinking is don't mess up. <laughs> I think that was like the most obvious one for me. I didn't want to go out there and look like a fool, but it turned out good. I tried to just do the simple things right and just tried to make a good run. And then I ended up getting in the box and I scored. So it was good. All right. Speaking of good runs, I got one more play I want you to walk us through. Last year against RSL, the run. Uh, what do you remember about that play? And throws it into space for Cowell. Look how much he's got to run into. Beasler trying to chase him down. Cowell now slowing down. Cowell cutting inside. Great skill, Kate Cowell! What a moment for the 18-year-old! I remember JT getting the ball, and um, I remember I was like wide open on the the like outside of the field. So he threw it to me, and I just kept dribbling. I just kept taking the space, kept taking the space. And then it was Justin Glad, I think, who stepped to me, and I wanted to shoot it, but then he like blocked it. So I just like my instinct was just to cut in, and then go back to my right and then I just like kind of just tapped it in past uh, Ochoa so that was a really cool play I remember that I was really excited about that all right man uh, Kate Cal appreciate you thanks for the time and uh, good luck in the international tournament or what's left of it thank you I appreciate it